know, you see this on so many shows where people will say, oh, have you seen whatever show? Just get through the first season. And and I mean, I don't think that was our show. I think we had a great first season. But I we do did. think, you know, you are trying to figure out what the hell you're doing for a while. My name is Anna Silk. For six seasons, I played Bo on the hit TV series, Lost Girl. I am so happy you are here for the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast to take a trip down memory lane with me, the amazing cast, and some very special guests. I'm so glad to finally be able to say the family is back together again. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode one of the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast. We are so excited that you are joining us today in an endeavor that was frankly inspired by all of you. Um, Each week, I will be joined by an amazing cast member to co-host with me. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce my co-host for today. And I can't do it without crying. I'm just going to say it right now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh, everyone. Okay. One of the greatest life lessons I ever learned was from my co-host today. And that lesson, excuse me, that lesson was to recognize and embrace the moment that you are in while you are in it. This person brought this energy with her every single day to set. So in the spirit of this lesson, I just want to say that I recognize the moment that I am in. And I am so lucky and full of so much gratitude to sit here right now talking to all of you Lost Girl fans. as I get to introduce one of my dearest friends, my fiercest advocate on and off set, uh, as well as my greatest on-screen love. So please help me welcome the beautiful Zoe Palmer. Oh my goodness, Zoe. Hello. <laughs> that was quite an introduction. I'm, the feeling I, is beyond mutual. Oh, it's, thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor to be here. So thank I'm you. I'm clearly me. very excited to see you and so <laughs> moved. I'm so, I have such a reverence for this moment. I have to tell you, and I will stop crying. I will pull myself together, but just for everyone listening and, you know, I love you. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Thank you very much. Um, so uh, I'm excited to do this. We're here to talk about season one, episode one. The okay. very beginning right. of Lost Girl. Yeah. Uh, it was the title was It's a Fay 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 World. Yeah. Written by Michelle Lavretta and Is it directed. Three fey, fey, yeah, there's three Fays. Fay 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 World. It's a Fay 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 World. Okay. That's like um, la 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 or something. I don't know what it's like. And I was actually trying to think like, is that trying to reference something that I'm not getting? I don't know. Uh, uh, well, I'll think on. We'll think on that. We'll put a pin in that. Okay. But anyway, it was written by Michelle Lavretta, yeah. directed by Eric Canuel. Yes. Um, how did you feel watching this episode and what were your oh. first impressions watching it? Yes, it was, um, you know, I, I imagined watching it and how it would be. And then I watched it after <laughs> that. And um, it was a intriguing, quite different intriguing. experience. Yeah, I have to say, you know, I was immediately reminded about just how beautifully cast the show was, you know, because every time someone would come on screen, and I mean, literally everyone, you know, there was, of course, Emmanuel was in this episode and Clay as the Ash and, and you and Ksenia and Rick and Chris and everybody sort of came on screen in their own uh, moments. And I went, yeah, yeah, that's why they got that job. You know, know. like I right away was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this was like, in terms of the, um, you know, and Lisa Parison, uh, was our casting director, Mm -hmm. um, you know, just did a a beautiful job of finding the right people to play these parts because they all really do shine. Yeah. I know. And it was, I mean, it was a real 
casting vision, I think that um, it was kind of groundbreaking and yeah. really interesting yeah. and so full. You know, everyone was, came on screen so full. And that's that's what struck me about watching it too is because it's everyone's intro of their character. That's you know? right. That's um, right. We filmed this episode first when we went to series. We had filmed our pilot a year before, mm -hmm. um, but when we, which m most fans know, aired as episode eight in our first season. But when yeah. we came to series, this was the first one episode that we shot. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's I, I had preconceived ideas too of what I was going to feel watching it, which was. Um, terror because frankly I was I was equally full of excitement and absolute terror when we started filming because I just thought oh my gosh that I want to do this so well you know yeah. this matters so much and I, I need to do this so well and I wished partway through this episode I could like reach into the screen and just tap Bo on the shoulder and be like Anna you're just it's you're okay. fine yeah. You're fine. Like just I remember feeling very similarly. Yeah. When I came to shoot my stuff. I remember feeling, you know, I hope I can do what they want. I hope I can yeah. give them what it is they imagined. Yeah. You know? Exactly. I did certainly feel that sense of really wanting to show up. And I think also, you know, looking around the set uh those first few days and watching everybody really show up. Yeah. Watching everybody give it their all, you know, everybody came to play and really put a hundred percent in. And so of course then, you know, I want to be like, I'm me too. I'll, I'm here too. I'm going to, I'm going to do my best too. You know, like totally. I did feel that sense of wanting to kind of really yeah. show up for everyone. Yeah. And for everyone listening, you know, when we film something, especially like all that stuff, remember we filmed at U of T, uh, University yeah. of Toronto, which Is has that all where that, that was. Yes, it was yeah. so beautiful. Yeah, um, like the compound or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, you show up to set. You've got uh, over a hundred crew members. Yeah. Everyone, there's all these pieces coming together. There's huge cost involved and huge skill and talent and all this stuff is coming together for what's about to happen between action and cut. You know, yep. and that's that's when you have to show up. And you're right. Everyone did. I, oh. I mean, I loved your entrance when, when you walk in, in, of course, your lab coat. Yeah. Um, right away, you're Dr. Lauren Lewis. And yeah. it made me so happy <laughs> to see you sort of glide in. It's funny to did. watch it, you know, because I remember viscerally, I remember filming it. Like I remember it so clearly. I do those too. moments of shooting those scenes. I, I can really bring them back in my mind and, and the feeling on set and watching Emmanuel come in and do her entrance and watching Chris, I, 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 cause I was off to the side for a lot of that, for that scene where you get brought in. Right. I was kind of off to the side waiting for my entrance. So I was watching all of that being filmed for a while before I came in and I just was like, it was one of those moments, I think, where I kind of was like, I think this might be kind of cool. Like, you know, yeah. because yeah. we were in such a bubble for the first season of whether or not the show would, would do okay or, or whether it was going to be what we all hoped it would be and all of that stuff. And there were these moments. And I remember that particular day was one of those moments where I sort of looked around and went, huh. This yeah, is this is good. special. I yeah. know. I think there were moments where we were like, this is, we are in a bubble, but it feels like a little magic bubble. I wonder yeah. if it will be a magic bubble outside of what we're doing right now, you know? That's right. Yeah. We would get these little yeah. hints that like something cool might be going on. And that was one of them mm -hmm. for me that day. There was mm -hmm. all of us there. There was a bunch of us there. It was a big, you know, it was a big scene. It was a huge scene. And I don't know if right. you remember so this, but I remember this really distinctly when, when, Chris's character, when Dyson has to fly across and sort of do his wolfing out, that was uh, a stunt and a CGI moment. Sure. And do you remember, Zoe, we all had to freeze like statues? Yes. I just remembered that one. I've forgotten. Yes. I had forgotten until we watched it. We all had to freeze so they could do the sort of tracking of Chris. Um, 
Because anyway, come, come it's just a, a fun sort of behind the scenes thing for people yeah. to know that that's kind of how that yeah, stuff is yeah, done yeah. in real life. We're all just standing mm-hmm. there like statues feeling kind of silly, yeah. but um, but it's only a blip on screen and it looked really amazing. Um, oh, yeah. I loved seeing all the stuff. I mean, I'm in the bar in the beginning, you know, Bo is there, Kenzie's comes yeah. in. That guest star, um, whose name I believe is Graham Wood, he was my first succubus kiss. Yeah. He, um, I thought he was so, I mean, he's so creepy and smarmy and that's exactly how he, did he should be. He did a great job. He did a great job and he was actually yeah. British. Um, okay. and he had this great Southern accent and, um, he was so good. And I remember for people listening to the, the bar was on location in a bar, the parking lot and elevator, they had built that elevator in the parking lot. It was just like this box in the middle of nowhere. And then the inside of the elevator where I kiss him was actually in the studio. So it actually took three separate shoot days to oh, film really? that sequence. Yes. Um, you mean which the I always elevator think is, kiss? Yeah, the elevator kiss. So the day of the elevator kiss, which was in the studio, suddenly there's a lot of producers on set. Suddenly there's a lot of tension in the air, you know, because- Yeah, well, they were, they, it was an establishing moment. Totally. I, right. And I didn't even know what it was going to be. You know, I had yeah. some ideas- but, um, and it was very technical in terms of like pulling him in and then like sucking his chi. And then like, they're like, open your eyes really wide, wider, wider. So I'm like doing this crazy yeah, stuff yeah, and just yeah. hoping that it's not going to look ridiculous. And it didn't look ridiculous. Um, but it was just, I just loved watching all of that. Cause I, I remember that so well. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and, um, it was actually a combination of me and my double that carried Ksenia. Um, I, I wondered that yes. cuts, and then picking her up off the ground is not something mm-hmm. I could do. Putting her, if someone puts her on my shoulder, I could carry her a few steps. Right. Um, she's very light, <laughs> but right. you know, she's a, a person that I can't pick up off the ground for sure. Right. So it was, yeah, it was a combination of my, my double and me doing that. Um, did you notice in the beginning theme that the music was different? No, we didn't. We must have not had our theme song by then. Oh, okay. I just noticed when they did the sort of opening credits where it said Lost Girl, I noticed the music was different. Um, I also loved seeing – I mean, I always love seeing Dyson and Hale in the cop shop. Yeah. Like just – Yeah, I was reminded reminded of the chemistry. I mean, I think that that was what stands out so much was that the chemistry – of the whole show was always sort of on point, but then you would break off into these little teams. Obviously uh, Dyson and Hell was one of them, you know, and the chemistry between the two of them was just, just beautiful. Mm -hmm. They just lifted every scene that they were in together. You saw uh, a history between the two of them, you know, you saw right away that these, these two were connected and would like, you know, take a bullet for each other. Like right away, you kind of understood their relationship. And then you, you see you and Dyson and similar, very different vibe and dynamic, but nonetheless, like the chemistry is there. You and I, the chemistry is there. Like all of these little, even, um, uh, the, the Ash and, and the Morgan. Totally. And the scenes between those two, fantastic chemistry. Like, that's what I mean by the casting was just this, I mean, you, you it's so good that you'd almost have to go, it was a happy accident, which of course it wasn't. You know, a lot of, a lot of time and, and thought what went into picking everybody who played, who played, who they played, but it was it was so palpable the chemistry between each dynamic and then the group as a whole. And that, that, that I think was through the whole series, you know, uh, yeah. when you get to characters that came along later, like it only ever complemented that. Totally. And I mean, yeah. I think the fact that we are all still friends. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's rare, sure. you know, that you'd go to work together for that many years and, and still, still be so yeah. close. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. It was real. I think that was, I mean, that, those connections, uh, that, that fans were feeling, uh, were real, you know, Mm -hmm. the love was real. It was real. The love was real. Yeah. Um, I also loved watching Bo pack when she had to race out of town because she packs like me where she packs more products than clothes. Oh. So apparently it takes a lot of products to be a succubus. Um, which I thought was kind of funny. Do you pack a lot of product? I pack so many products. What, 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 what is it? What, what's well, like the main you need thing? The, you need makeup. Sure. And there's a lot of pieces to makeup. Okay. And you need so the hair. Of- 
yeah, the hair product and the flat iron and the curling iron. Okay. And the creams and the smelly things. And okay. It just seems like there's a lot of products. And I was surprised at how many products Bo had. Okay. You Um, felt connected to her there. Yes, I felt connected to her there. Okay. That was that was a yeah. Um, best memories of filming this episode. We've touched on that a little bit, obviously, but does anything come to mind? Well, for you? I do remember uh, that episode because it was the first one. We were still playing around with the idea that Lauren would be British. Oh yes, I remember this. And I was doing scenes with an English accent. Yes, because I'm so we, glad we, you're sharing that, Zoe, because that's my memory of your entrance is you walked in yes. with a British accent and they went, ah. I didn't know that, that, that we had come to the decision that that wasn't happening anymore. So poor. Why did you need to know? You didn't need to know that. <laughs> no one had told me that we were ditching the idea or they had told me and I forgot, I don't know, or I was adamant to do a British accent. Honestly, I'm not sure what the, the order of those events were, but very sweetly, Vanessa came up and was like, so, um, <laughs> I know they sort of You're called gonna- cut. And then yeah. she went over to you. I was doing this you. whole thing with this British accent. And, and I think it was Vanessa that said, um, uh, we're just going to not have an accent. And I was like, oh, okay. And that's a huge change. I was like, yeah, because I had been working on it with this British accent. and with learning lines in a British accent. Because when you have, when you use an accent, and I think most actors would, would say this, but I'm not sure. But I certainly do uh, work on it in accent. Totally. You don't work it, on it in a North American accent and then fling into a British accent. You work on it in accent. Yeah. So I was like on the spot going, okay. And it also, accents are very much, uh, dialects, accents are very much inform a, a lot of other things, right? They inform body language. They inform a vibe, an energy about the character, right? Like, yeah. you know, a, a a really strong East London Cockney accent brings a very different vibed person, for example, than, you know, uh, the Queen's English. Yeah. I also so, find that they put a layer, there's a layer in front, like sort of between, I guess what I'm saying is on the day when you got that news, I mean, you managed to turn it around really quick, but that's not <laughs> an easy thing to do. And from my memory, when we auditioned together, yeah, you did some with a British accent and some without, right? Yeah, we were t- we were talking about it, and I did know uh, that w- everyone was always saying like we're not sure. We d- we just want to know, can you do it with a British accent? You know, so we were playing around with that, and I think for some reason I'd gotten in my head that that's what we were doing. Um, anyway. Uh, she became not British quickly and stayed not British. Stayed not British. It, it's years. hard to imagine actually now Lauren being British. Yeah. 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 Now. I mean, totally. totally. Thankfully, it was just that first scene. I it was really just it. your first line because you walked yeah. in like that. I didn't even know that it had changed. Did I get my first line out before somebody came flying over going, stop? Yeah. Stop. Uh, not British. Yeah. And Bo, you're British now. And I was like, no, yeah. no, I'm not British. That's right. Yeah. You're German. <laughs> uh, not That part is not true. But yeah, that was so interesting. I um, yeah. Some of my best memories watching, you know, watching the... Bo and Dyson walk by each other in slow motion. That was great. That was the first thing we filmed. That was the a great v- moment. And they did a great day. job of slowing his look yes. down and yes. really like. That was yeah. day one scene. Yeah. First scene we were shooting ever in Lost Girl history was that moment. It's a great scene. And then all, it's all there in that scene. You see it is. the connection. It is. You see the kind of mistrust Mm-hmm. You see, you know, like with him and going yep. like, what's you the deal You also see here? his power in the Fey world, like his yeah. uh, his tracking abilities, his, you know. Um, yeah. So that was the first thing we shot. And then the second thing we shot right after it, of course, was the last scene of the episode where Kenzie and Bo are walking down the same street. Um, right, you know, of course. Talking about like anyone could be Fey. And she's like, my money's on Wiener Dude or whatever, which was so – I loved that last moment of like yeah, yeah. going into this world together. Um, but yeah, that was the second thing we shot that day. The other thing I loved watching because this was on day one of filming as well for me and Ksenia was the scene in the in the diner where we have milkshakes and she's like, oh, what yeah. are you or whatever. I remember just being so nervous to film that and there was a lot of tension on set, you know. 
happy tension, but everyone, it was the first day for everybody sure. and expectations were high and there was yeah. just, there was a lot of energy around us. And I remember being very nervous and it's so funny to watch that scene now because it's such a lovely scene um, of Bo and Kenzie sort of yeah. discovering each other and, you know, Bo still not understanding what she is. She's just like, oh, I'm a freak. Well, there was a lot of that season one where, you know, they, they were, and, and, and for, for good reason, uh, in terms of like a, a lot of people coming down to watch scenes to see that it was, that it was, of um, course. you know, fulfilling the vision essentially. Right. And, yeah. and that it was in, with the right tone and, and that, that we were kind of doing what, what the writers and creators had imagined. And, and so, you know, but of course the flip side of that is as an actor, you're going, is it okay? I know. <laughs> Why is everyone staring at the monitor extra hard? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and but it's just funny to watch on, back. Of- yeah. Um, I also loved our scene together in the lab where you yeah. bring Bo in to um, examine her. And I had forgotten that I'm kind of, I'm nude for like half that scene. You sure are. I'm sitting there nude. And yeah. I don't know if you remember that day of filming too, because they were, that was the first sort of <laughs> no, nudity. <it's> <laughs> yeah, that was the only nudity or the first nudity, not only nudity, but I first was nudity. Say, there was a little bit more after that. <laughs> there was just like a tiny little bit. Yeah. Um, but there was again, a lot of people on set to kind of figure that out. Yeah. Right. And so that, I just remember that happening, but I have to say, Zoe, you were so wonderful in that scene. Like you just hit every beat and nuance and Mm. it was just so great to watch. Oh, thank Um, you. And I love that scene between us. You know, I mean, yeah, that's the thing with scenes, right? Is that you can't uh, do your job really unless the other person's doing their job, right? Like it's, that's the whole idea of it. And, you know, I think it was uh, obvious quickly when you and I started working together, certainly our dynamic, um, you know, took a life of its own. Like we both went in full tilt and wanted to kind of give it our all. And I think we did, you know, we sure did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Seth and Rachel, before I move on, there is a leaf blower outside my window and I just want to know. That's good luck. It's good luck. And they don't usually, that's... they don't usually blow this time of day. We're back. We took a little leaf blower pause. <laughs> um, and had a long conversation about leaf blowers. Yeah. Because that's what we do. That's what um, we always did. That's what we, I mean, if, if I had a nickel every oh time. Oh my God. <laughs> buy a leaf blower. <laughs> or two. Yeah, at least. <laughs> One each. One for each of us. <laughs> that's right. Um, so to get back to a couple of things, we were talking about best memories from the show. I just yeah. also have to point out the older gentleman who played the pain eater when Bo has to go through the test yeah. and there, he's the one who has to give her like the mental test. Yes. I just loved him. He reminds me of Voldemort. Yes. And he's like, it, it, he's just this, he was such a lovely presence on set, which was, uh, was filmed all on green screen for everyone listening. And it clearly was, we were not, all these things were not really happening. Um, but I loved doing that scene with him. I just, I remember feeling such a s- connection to him and he made me feel so vulnerable, um, which was, you know, kind of the point of the scene. Yeah. I, loved- I mean, it looked great. I wasn't there yeah. that day, but it, it, uh, it, you didn't you know. just show up to watch that. No, weirdly I didn't, but, um, so, so but disappointed. It, was, it was awesome <laughs> to see it. I remember thinking that the first time I saw it way back in the day, way back in the day. Yeah. Um, I also loved, Emmanuel's speech to Bo, where she's talking about like, this is a two-party system. You know, she explains yeah. basically how this all works. She's so bright. Oh, I mean. We say it every single time, but like, she's just j- truly really great. I-, I don't know how she does it. I literally I just, my, I'm always just staring at her after going, how did well, you do I that? I remember, and I didn't know her at all when we shot the show. Like I, I was meeting a lot of people for the first time. You, I had met, you know, a handful of times in audition rooms and whatnot, but we were all sort of getting to know each other and Emmanuel, I didn't know at all. And I remember watching her when she, her first entrance, when you get brought in by Dyson and Hale. And I was just really taken by what she did. And, and the reason I was, was because the character had the, the, the pitfall of that character was that it could end up being really arch and really caricature. And she wrote that line so closely. She but did didn't ever cross it. No. And, 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 and it when it gets to be done. too much of a caricature, what it does right. is it disconnects from the rest of the 
grateful she around you. She pushes it as far nope, as she and pushes that was us, done but she much. was always connected to us. Yep. She was grounded and centered there. It was all, it always had a bottom. So it wasn't this kind of flyaway caricature that you were like, what is that? You know, she, but she pushed it right to that edge, which is incredibly hard to do without falling over. And she yeah. managed it brilliantly. Yeah. And I she was did. always really impressed with her ability to do that. Me too. Me too. Yeah. And I loved doing that scene with her. Um, I also loved seeing, this is just a little behind the scenes thing for, for everybody that watched the episode. Uh, the, the truck that the black van that pulls up the one that Kenzie's underneath yeah. and she kind of rolls off the driver that gets out of that van was actually my, my driver on the show who oh. picked me up. It was Dushan. It was? Yes, it was Dushan. He played. I just he, worked with him. You did? Oh. And we had a big cry and a big hug. I bet you did. We so, cried almost every morning. He he would come and pick me up and get out of, you know, he's such a gentleman. He would get out yes. of his car and mm -hmm. come around and open the door for me, give me a big hug yeah. and, you know, and drop me off and give me a big hug. Like, he's the best. I know. He's such a wonderful man. He really became yeah. like family to me. Oh and. Yeah. He, like, he picked me up every day and he yeah. drove me home every day. And we, we, we would be, he'd be telling me stories and he'd be crying because he'd be he's moved by some memory <laughs> of, you know, um, and then after my son was born after, during season four, right before season four, he then was picking up me, my baby, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. um, he just oh, no, was such best. a, such a bright light on that show for me. Like he, he was just wonderful. I just yeah. loved him so much. So it was just really funny for me to see him he had in a the cameo. episode. Yeah. He had a cameo, which awesome. I think he had several in the show, but that was, yeah, that yeah. was his first, uh, most difficult or challenging part of filming this episode. Well, I, I'm watching it. I remember, um, there's that scene where I sort of, I'm trying to say that I, we can help you with your, you know, urges. And um, then you sort of start to seduce me and succubus me and whatnot. And I remember, I remember when we shot it, trying to figure out how to play that a little bit on the line as well, because, you know, I all of a sudden sort of fall apart in your arms and then you lead me out the door. But I still felt the need to keep some sense of um, hierarchy. Yeah. And you did. <laughs> And, and some sense of like m mystery to, about this character. And, you know, because, because uh, we're dealing with the, the yin and the yang of the light and the dark and the good and the bad and the whatever. And so I, I, I needed to, I felt the, the, the need to, uh, although I was absolutely seduced by Bo, there had to be some pull up away from go. Like I say, right. It, one of my lines is I know what you're doing. Yeah. Even though I can't quite fight it, I'm aware. You can't fight it, but you were you ha also had the sort of the doctor, the medical right. like awareness there, there felt of like it I too. I didn't want to let go of all of everything there and just yeah. kind of turn into. So I was trying to find that line. I remember when we shot it of like, how do I sort of acquiesce while keeping a hold of this kind of energy and character that we, I think needed to still have, you know, totally. So I remember yeah. that being a bit challenging in that scene for me. That's so cool. Well, it, I mean, it worked because you, you still had this awareness, you yeah. know, as, as the doctor part of you and right. Yeah. Um, I think some of my most challenging stuff, I mean, the glass factory, all that stuff was challenging. Sure. Uh, Physically I mean, one too. of the, what's that? Physically too. I mean, you had, oh, you had a lot of physical physically. demands in this role as a whole. Overall. Yes. But I will tell you the glass factory, which was actually an old glass factory. Um, right. It was in Hamilton. What does that and mean? They made glass? They was the, the building was made glass? of glass? I don't know. I, I, they made glass. Okay. I guess. I mean, that's what I think it means. I'm just glass deciding. Factory. I'm glass factory. Glass like, factory. Okay. And we called it the glass factory in the show sure. too. And it was a glass factory no longer right. in use, but it was the coldest this place on earth. This brought to you by the phrase, <laughs> sorry, go on. The glass factory. Yeah. Um, it was the coldest place on earth and that's not to complain yeah. about being cold, but I will tell you, yeah. it was the kind of cold where your sense of humor goes right away. Like it was Been beyond there. Been and there. the crew was freezing. We were all freezing. And so everyone would just really wanted to, to get through everything. It's hard and, to act when you're Yeah. When you're like, like <laughs> um, yeah. But it was, so it was, it was just challenging, you know? Um, yeah. 
and uh, the other little piece that was challenging, I mean, challenging in the sense that that it's all it's always you're filling in gaps as an actor. Uh, but I think it's just fun for fans to know is the the scene where Hale and Dyson come and Hale uses his powers, which I had forgotten that Hale uses his siren whistle to oh, get yeah. Bo yeah, right yeah, and they grab yeah. Bo. So we filmed yeah. that scene. And then right after that, we filmed the scene where Dyson drops off Kenzie and Bo, right? And it's the end. Um, so I just remember thinking, I th- and that was all the first day of shooting as well. So yeah. um, th- I'm filling in the whole story in my head uh, and hoping that I was sort of getting that. But I loved watching that last bit with Dyson and he's so proud of Bo. And, um, he did a great job too. I mean, it was it was such a treat to watch it again because I was really sort it of- was. It once again impressed and proud, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I just had this sort of big, huge, like, oh, there is everybody, and and, there is, and there what a are. beautiful job they all did. I know, I know. There's something really special about this season. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, any behind the scenes memories or secrets about filming this episode? This specific episode? Yeah, this specific episode. I don't know. Behind the scenes, memories and secrets. I don't know. I mean, we've kind of touched on a few little (laughs) tidbits here and there. I, the one that I remember that is the scene between Bo and Kenzie in, um, after she brings her home, you know, Kenzie has passed out, Bo has carried her out of the elevator and then throws her on the couch Mm. and Bo is then getting ready to leave and Kenzie wakes up. We actually shot that scene and it didn't work at all. Why not? I, I I don't know exactly why, but I remember filming it and it was painful to shoot, painful for everyone around us. Ksenia and I were both going, why isn't this working? I don't know why it didn't work, but didn't work and we had to reshoot it. It's the only time I've we ever had to reshoot something. And it makes yeah. sense that it would be in the first episode because you really want to get everything right. It ended up being a great scene and... Um, I don't know why we had to reshoot it. I do remember in the original filming of it, I was sitting down in this like really slumpy on our couch, which remember the couch in the apartment when you sat on it, like you fell into it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was a lot of scenes anyway, on that couch. A lot of stuff happened on that couch. Everything almost. Where is that couch now? I don't know. You don't have it? I don't. <laughs> I, I, I didn't bring you that home. You didn't keep it. No, um, but it was a great couch. It was a great couch. Uh, anyway, we had to re reshoot that scene, and I just remember being slightly upset and, and worried and nervous and all that stuff. But you know, I think we were always like, you know, that first, certainly the first few episodes, but that whole first season, we were all finding our feet. You know, totally. We were all figuring out our characters, figuring out our dynamics, figuring out each other. Um, you know, the the writers were learning about us and what we, you know, different things that we could do and that they were starting to infuse the show with some of the things that, you know, they were starting to learn about us, which I thought was just incredible of them. Um, yeah. You know, and really spoke to, well, so much, how much they cared, how much attention they were paying, how much it mattered to them too. Um, you know, I really watched them watching us and figuring us all out too as, mm-hmm. as the show progressed. And so you know, yeah, the first few episodes, you know, you see this on so many shows where people will say, oh, have you seen whatever show? Just get through the first season. And and I mean, I don't think that was our show. I think we had a great first season. But I we do did. think, that, you know, you are trying to figure out what the hell you're doing for a while. Yeah. With a new show and a new character and new, all of that, right? Yeah. Also, so it's not there was- crazy that there'd be the odd scene that, you know, right. maybe you have right. to- I ha- had completely forgotten that until I watched yeah. it and I went, oh, yeah, we had to reshoot that, right. um, which I'm glad we did. But, yeah, we were figuring everyone out. Yeah. And, you know, Michelle Lavretta wrote this first episode. It, the storytelling is so rich uh, sh- and, yeah. it, you know, kind of just like – Everything with Dyson and Hale in the elevator. I loved the sort of he's investigating. He you can right away in that exchange. You know that they're not human. They're trying to cover something from human cops. They're talking about a sloppy kill. Yeah, you know, and and that tells you something about Bo, right? Like it it just the storytelling was so rich and so the characters were three dimensional. Yeah, always and uh, you know the moment they walked on screen. Yep, and 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 like. 
that went for certainly our characters as as the main cast, but you know, guest stars and 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 smaller roles were as significant and as fleshed out. Totally. I thought they did a great job. Of- Every guest star on our show showed yep. up and had something fun 100%. to do and like nailed it. Yep. You know, I was always yeah, in was- awe of of doing of what they brought and they had fun characters to play. They did. You know. They did. Oh my gosh, Zoe. Well, um thank you for joining it's me my today. my pleasure. I'm thrilled. Uh, it is my absolute pleasure too. Thank you everyone for listening. Um, yeah. This has been episode one of the Lost Girl Rewatch been. podcast. We did it. Yeah, we did. Leaf blowers and all. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, I don't really think it could have worked without at least one leaf blower. And yeah. thankfully it came through. I think we need one in maybe every episode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, on that note. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's blow out of here. Yes. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, everybody. We'll see you on the next one. Rachel. Oh my goodness. We had our first episode. <laughs> our very first episode. So amazing. Also, I feel like uh, my voice went really high there. <laughs> <laughs> it did because you're so excited. I know. You're so it excited. Was so nice to see Chris. He's grown his hair out long. Um, he looked really beautiful in that episode. <laughs> what are what- Oh, it's Zoe. I'm I'm joking. Oh, okay. I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, although, because Chris talks so much about his hair, that's why I was confused. Um, <laughs> yes, yes. It was so good to see Zoe and to talk about the first episode, which is like a million years ago and had so much to unpack there, I think. Oh my goodness, I know. And, you know, it's funny because, uh, so this portion of the podcast going forward will not just be Anna and I coming on here joshing around. It is actually going to be what we will call going forward our spotlight series. Yes. Uh, Anna, do you want to say a little bit of, about that? Um, I do, but I, first I need a sound effect to okay. introduce the spotlight. Right. Are you ready? <laughs> I mean, is anyone ever? Oh wait, that's the wrong one. <laughs> Hang on. I don't have my glasses on. This is the one I meant. Okay. The spotlight is. The oh spotlight. God, so lame. Is <laughs> <laughs> so lame that it's awesome. You know it. Um, spotlights, we're going to highlight or spotlight people, various creatives who contributed to the show in, in a myriad of ways. Yes. Um, because we didn't do it all by ourselves, folks. Uh, there's so many elements that have to come together from every department, um, all with through a creative lens. And um, we are going to talk to some of those people. Yeah. So we're very excited about a lot of our guests this year. Totally. And I think one of the cool things about this podcast uh, is sort of pulling back the curtain on the whole experience of what it was to make Lost Girl behind the scenes. But we couldn't do that justice or do it properly without including uh, makeup and lighting and direction and ADR mm-hmm. and all these things that, um, you know, our, our job is, is just such a small part of the, the mosaic that makes a show. And so we're just really, really excited uh, to uh, you know, show you guys all of those different aspects of, of making the making of Lost Girl. The making of Lost Girl. Exactly. And you know what? It's you're right. It's a small part of what we do is is actually like the tiniest in terms part. of the tiniest part in terms of like the number of minutes that are actually spent of us talking and saying the dialogue. Yeah. But all of those people that bring you there make you that character, you know? 100%. Um and, and they sometimes have wisdom over things too. They, oh, they do. Um, they have yeah. they have way more wisdom and experience usually um, than we do. Well, actually, a funny story is um, in season three, I wore this turquoise leather jacket, and I remember going into the wardrobe fitting, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm not wearing that." <laughs> I thought it was so <laughs> ugly. <laughs> Like, that's terrible. I don't want to wear it. And I remember they were like, no, 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 just give it a try. And it became this iconic Tamsin it, jacket. I, I know exactly which jacket. So 
yes. And it looked so good on camera. And after that, it was a real lesson for me because after that, people would put me in things. And I'd be like, yeah, sure. You know better than I do. You know better. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, well, so that's, like I mean, that. you, cause you build that trust, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I felt like that with our lighting, you know, it was so beautiful that after a while I was like, I'm not so worried anymore, you know, um, uh, mm-hmm. makeup, wardrobe, hair, the writing. I mean, it, you know, it just goes on and on and on, but it's funny. Cause like, there's actually a part of me once that like on maybe on more than one occasion, uh, kind of forgot that I actually can't lift grown men and throw them across rooms. Because the stunt team really made me feel like I could. Because when you're working with a great stunt person, as you know, like when you pick them up and you like throw them, they go flying. But they throw like hit a wall, they throw themselves. Like I can't actually pick up that giant 250 pound man and throw him, but it feels like I can. So, like, I think I developed this overinflated sense of my physical abilities. I do um, not. I've always been well aware of how <laughs> limited I am in that capacity. <laughs> <laughs> it's just amazing when people do their job so well. And the interesting thing about a lot of the work that happens, because a lot of it happens beforehand, but then what we do has to happen on the day, in the moment. We can't act ahead of the scene. You know, yeah. we can prepare, sure. But it, it's really once they call action that things start to happen. And so like for stunt performers, they have been rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing. And then they have like one or two takes usually um, to yeah, kind of it's two takes. To nail it. Yeah. Like one, because a stunt is so complex and they break a part of the set um, yeah. or it's just too expensive to do more than once. And uh, the, the pressure, the pressure. The pressure. And it's the same with actors too. I mean, you know, we have some cutting tools in there and we can restart and stuff, but there's pressure too to show up and do it. Like there's just no time. There's no time to, to, to think that you have like a million takes or like you kind of don't and not in TV land. You got to just, you got to keep it moving. No. And if you, if you do, your cast is all going to hate you. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But we, we moved on Lost Girl. We really did. And so, yeah, so every week or every episode, we'll be highlighting a spotlight where we get to talk to some really like super special people yes. that so just, became friends, you know? Absolutely. They were part of the family as we were like part of the say. family. And these are the, these are the parts of the family that, family that you guys don't get to meet. They don't go to cons. They weren't on camera, but trust yeah. me, they were like, like this far away from us while we were filming, At like right here, times. like right here. Yeah. yeah, I think I became so desensitized to uh, people, like my own personal space, you know, because yeah. you get so used to people, they'll come in, they're just touching your hair and you're having like a conversation and they're like this on your face, and, you know, yeah. in your wardrobe. And um, they, yeah, they really become an extension of uh all, all facets of, of both making the show, but also just your life. Like you become such, such good friends. It's been so nice. I think that's been one of the most rewarding things aside from getting to spend so much time with you is just getting to see all of these people again and talk to them. Yeah, I know. It's really, really special. Yes. Um, you just conjured up an image for me when you're talking about them touching your face and your hair. That's what it's kind of like on set. It's like, if it's your moment, your close up, let's say, everyone flocks around you. You've got like, you know, the DP looking and moving lights and, you know, talking to people on a walkie and talk, 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 and people are coming in and the hair's coming in, you know, you, you're looking at your script and makeup's there and wardrobe's there adjusting. Then they all like run away for a second. You film and you're like, wow, like here's my moment. And then they're like, okay, moving on to now we're going to go film Zoe. And like, literally like it goes like black on you and you're like in the dark and everyone to them, they're all over Zoe and they're like doing everything to her. And you're like, oh, I guess my moment's over. I mean, it's just, I can see how actors um, develop a really overinflated sense of self. And I can also see why they're crushed constantly. (laughs) Because <laughs> it's literally the focus is is on and off you all the time. Um, so can you see my dog in the background right now? I can't. <laughs> okay, good. I tried to angle it up, but she's just she's having a party behind me, and I'm. You know what like, I realized you can see in my background? Oh, maybe you can. Can you see a, a yellow box out there now? Oh, there's no. a yellow box outside. No. Oh no. No, it wasn't there before. No, I can't oh. see it. <laughs> You're like, oh my God, the box. <laughs> it's because my sons play a game where they go out on this balcony and they yeah. throw a, a box onto the lawn. It has a rope and they lower it. And then 
they one of them will be down there. They'll put stuff in it and then pull it up. Um, oh, okay, to, yeah. And they can entertain themselves for hours doing this. And yesterday, I actually had to put stuff in the box. And at one point, I put in some gummy bears, and they were shocked, first of all, that I put that in there. And then they were like, so happy. Anyway, <laughs> that is why there's a yellow box. I don't know if you know if you can see it, but it wasn't there before. It just made an appearance for, for today's yellow spotlight. Box. <laughs> yeah. Once once again, we end the spotlight saying the other ones will be better. <laughs> <laughs> the other ones will be better, you guys, because we we are so lucky that everyone we've asked just jumped on board because yeah. Yeah. everybody had some sort of meaningful experience on Lost Girl. And um and we get to talk about it with them. And yeah. we're excited. We're very excited. And I feel like I feel like we need another sound effect, like a quick one. Like um, this okay. is how excited we are yeah. for the spotlights. You ready? Yeah. Oh, I would. Is that excited enough? <laughs> I think no, that was that pretty was good. Like a, you did a good job. Well done, you. That's oh, me, oh. Like Warren. Okay, let's see here. All right. The only problem with this one is it's very long. But you know what? These spotlights deserve it. We'll talk over it. <laughs> Stop. Sit down, everybody. Sit down. <laughs> My God. <laughs> This will be the first and last time we use sound effects. Yeah, that's a note to self. Let me just make a little note here. I'm (laughs) not going to use the cheering. Anyway, thank you guys. Um, We do have a very exciting season planned and lots more to cover. And you will get a little inside look into every, everything lost girl. Little peek. Little peek. All right, Rach. (laughs) Love you. Love you too. We will talk soon. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Let's cheer out of here. <laughs> the end was weak. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let, let me find a sound effect. I can edit it. Out. There'll be a smaller okay, he can edit it out. Here's the edit. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I don't even know what that was. Or how about this? Oh. <laughs> I got a lot of mom moves in there. I really do. <laughs> we all know I'm a terrible dancer, so. All right. That's uh, good. Those are some sick, sick moves. Okay. I'm going to, I'll just stop recording there. For all to see that you let me ride along for listening to this week's episode of the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast, which is produced by Anna Silk, Rachel Scarston, and Seth Cooperman, with theme music by our very own Blood King, Rick Howland. Please rate, review, and share the Lost Girl Rewatch podcast. This enables us to grow and to continue bringing you exciting new content every week. If you don't already, Follow us on Instagram and on our YouTube channel at Lost Girl Rewatch. You can also subscribe to Patreon for exclusive bonus episodes made just for you and get early access to all of our episodes. The other piece that made that show the whole piece of... <laughs> um, well said well said <laughs> the, uh, the the unbitten banana was bitten <laughs> like, what the fuck? absolutely I, you, you keep say, keep no going, more, so really. say no more really say no more seriously say no more <laughs>